In the Converging Design Project, the main things that we want to come out is to develop a new design paradigm. The converging design piece of it is because we're bringing not only our engineering performance objectives, which I would say are more traditional, but we're also looking at sustainability, we're looking at resilience, and we're really trying to put that into a context of having affordable buildings and affordable structures that are more resilient and more sustainable. In the converging design project, we ended up using a specimen that had been built, a 10-story specimen. And our project was the first to really reuse something like a 10-story building, where we took off the top four stories and then had a specimen that was a six-story building that we could work with and do further science. As that project unfolded, another group of researchers, which I uh, was collaborating with, decided that this would be an optimal opportunity to reuse a portion of the specimen, but that meant also then utilizing all of the connections. And so there was a, a natural collaboration that sort of grew out of Tallwood with the converging project, and that was between Simpson Strong Tie and, of course, the university partnership, about four universities. The benefits of using two different types of material, like mass timber and steel for lateral resisting systems, is that you can provide other design solutions, new opportunities for mixing these structural systems. We're hearing from industry that there's this interest in really looking at alternatives, not just from mass timber, but also from these hybrid structures where we have mass timber and steel or other materials as well just to provide new opportunities and new solutions, new engineering solutions. The phase three of our Nahiri Converging Design shake table test included a very strong collaboration with Simpson Strong Tie. Now what we've done in phase three is we've created a hybrid structure where in one direction of the building, we're providing all the stability with our uh, concentric brace frame product, the yield link brace connection. These frames are six story tall steel frames that replaced the wood elements in the structure in order to provide the seismic stability during big shaking events. And we integrated the Simpson yield link moment connection as well. And what that did is it created kind of like an elastic rubber band that was wrapped around the brace frame system and so as the system deforms in an earthquake it gets pulled back to kind of its original position. In addition to that we borrowed some uh, new design methodologies that were developed at Stanford to look at specific effects of the earthquakes and how they affect the columns per se. We employed those to enhance the column design but the net result of that uh, was exactly what we had hoped that at the end of all this very large shaking we did not have any permanent residual movement in the building it was nice and straight and plumb just like when we started one of the reasons we do these full-scale shake table tests is that in design as academics we can we can set up these very complex and presumably accurate models of buildings but we historically have tested at the component or the sub-assembly so you know you test a wall or you test a connection and then you start adding it all together but what we found long ago at least through observation after earthquakes is that the, the sum of the parts does not always equal the whole and so these system level validations are, are key to making sure that, that the U.S. maintains the safest building codes in the world, which is what we have now. I think projects like converging design, where we're, we're taking this, this methodological and this disciplinary convergence and, and bringing all these things together, that, that's really the future of design. There'll be a time when we're actually designing based on what a whole community or a city needs versus, say, what the building owner wants to pay for. You know, profit will always be there, but it will be less driven by profit and, and really driven more by just the profit that is society, making society better. The inspiration for writing the grant for Converging Design comes from trying to have impact with people. So what I mean by that is coming up with solutions that are sustainable. If there is a next big earthquake, we have structures that are more resilient to allow people to shelter in place we really are looking at more of the, the whole life cycle of the building. So the upfront cost may be a little bit higher, but the owner then sees that 
they wouldn't have to move tenants out after a major earthquake when somebody else might if they didn't spend that little bit more up front. And so this is called functional recovery. It's basically getting the building to become functional either immediately or very quickly after the earthquake. When it came to phase three, we took a look at two ground motions in particular. One was from the 2010 Ferndale earthquake and one was from the 1989 Loma Prieta earthquake. And we ran multiple tests varying the intensity from something fairly small. Then we stepped it up again, let's do some testing that's commensurate with maybe every 500 years or so. And then once we saw the results of that, we were confident to keep pushing forward. We then scaled them both up to what we call the maximum considered earthquake level. Roughly about 2,500 year return interval, the basis of the code. That under that level of shaking that we should not have any collapse as a, as a minimum performance standard. So we don't want to see collapse. But not only did we not see collapse, we didn't even have any permanent drift in the building. Everything looked just as good as it did before. Lastly, we hope that with the sustainability aspect, we can make a better world and a better future for my kids, for your kids, for the world in general. I do really hope that with an Ahiri Converging Design, we can make an impact. Maybe it's 30 years down the road, maybe it's 50 years down the road, but if people can continue their lives even after a major earthquake, that would be my goal, that there wouldn't be so much suffering, that there wouldn't be so much impact of these big earthquakes.